we're now ready to start discussing the uh, theories of acids and bases in terms of some definitions. And there are actually three competing definitions, uh, Arrhenius, uh, the brownstead lowry and the Lewis theory of acids and bases. The scope of this particular course will discuss the first two, the Arrhenius theory and the brownstead lowry theory. The Arrhenius theory is the first one that we'll discuss and is probably the one that's most familiar to us. In our note pack, just so you know where we are, we have our note pack open to page 9, just where we left off the last time we were working together. And it's under section 20-3, acids and bases and different theories. You can see the first of the three theories be uh, being discussed is the Arrhenius. Let's define in our note packs an Arrhenius acid. Arrhenius defined acids to be those compounds containing hydrogen that ionize to yield hydrogen ions in aqueous solutions. Acids ionize in aqueous solutions to form hydrogen ions. You'll need to write that in your note pack. Any compound that starts with an H, HCl, H2SO4, we've learned to recognize that when they start with an H, they're an acid. And that's really coming from the first of our definitions, the Arrhenius acid. HCl out of water is actually a gaseous compound. We would name it out of water hydrogen chloride. But when I dissolve it into water, it ionizes to create aqueous ions, hydrogen and chloride. The very definition of Arrhenius acids, any substance that when dissolved in water releases a hydrogen ion, we call it an acid. When sulfuric acid dissociates, breaks apart, forms ions, we can see it releasing two hydrogen ions and the polyatomic ion called sulfate. Hydrogen ion releasers, that's the first of our definitions on the Arrhenius side. If it starts with an H, it's an acid. That's something I've said all year long. We know that acids have a special set of rules for naming them because so. If an acid is said to be monoprotic, see that prefix mono? I think of the number one. Monoprotic releases a single hydrogen ion. If I look at a formula and just based on charge, I crisscross and have just one proton, one hydrogen ion that creates a neutral compound, it's called monoprotic. Other examples, HCl, H. NO3, and again, just based on charge, hydrogen's a plus one, polyatomic's a minus one, hydrogen nitrate. Nitric acid is a monoprotic acid. If it has just one H in its formula, monoprotic, releasing one proton when dissolved in water. Diprotic acids, di, that prefix, means two hydrogens have been needed to create a neutral compound. Hydrogen a plus one, our polyatomic sulfate, we recognize this to be an acid called sulfuric acid, is an example of a diprotic releasing two hydrogen ions. Here's an example where we have a polyatomic called arsenate minus three. See how it takes three hydrogens to create a neutral compound? Arsenic acid is a triprotic acid. Here's one we're familiar with as well, called phosphoric acid from the polyatomic ion phosphate. Three hydrogen released, triprotic. Two hydrogens, diprotic, and one hydrogen are referred to as monoprotic acids. Arrhenius gave us the definition that all acids start with an H, and if they start with an H, we recognize those to be ionizable hydrogens. But remember, not all hydrogens are considered acid hydrogens. Not all compounds that I see that element hydrogen in it are considered to be acidic. Only those hydrogens that are in very polar bonds are ionizable, that are released, that break apart and form acid ions known as H+. We try to make this as easy as possible to the reader. 
If you see a hydrogen written first in the formula, we know it to be acidic. If it's buried anywhere else in the formula, they are not acid hydrogens. For example, look at this compound HCl. See that hydrogen written first? This is a monoprotic acid. It will release one hydrogen ion. Here's a compound. It actually has four hydrogens. Why don't we combine those hydrogens? Well, the answer becomes only one of those is an ionizable proton. The ones buried later do not, do not dissociate to cause an effect of pH. Acetic acid, hydrogen acetate, is called acetic acid, is a monoprotic acid. Even though there's four H's, only one of them is considered to be an acid proton. The last one is called natural gas methane, CH4. Even though there's four hydrogens, it is not an acid. So we try to make it as easy as possible for the reader. If it starts with an H, it's an acid. If the H's are buried later in the formula, they are not acid protons. Identify these acids as monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic acids. And that's as easy as writing out the formulas. Here's an acid coming from ic. We need to find the polyatomic ion sulfate. Ic came from 8. And sulfate, of course, carries a minus 2 charge. To balance our charge, we need two protons. Sulfuric acid is diprotic. Phosphoric acid came from the polyatomic ion called phosphate. Phosphate is a polyatomic that carries a negative 3 charge, and we can see how this would become a triprotic acid, needing three hydrogens to balance the charge. Hydro root word ic came from the ion called chloride, I-D-E there, so we can see this one becoming a monoprotic acid acid. The number of H's determines not only how many H's we need from, to, uh, from balancing the negative ion, but we need to balance that and call it mono, di, or triprotic according to the Arrhenius definition. Continuing with some more Arrhenius on the top of your next notepad page, we'll define a base. Bases are those compounds that contain the hydroxide ion when released in water. Making it easy, it ends with OH negative, hydroxide. Those compounds that have an OH as part of their name. Sodium hydroxide, that's an Arrhenius base. Magnesium hydroxide, that's an Arrhenius base. Acids start with H, bases end with OH coming from the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. A couple of characteristics we're familiar with from studying reactions in chemistry. Bases can be made when an active metal is placed into water. An active metal re relies on something we call the activity series. We had a group of metals that were strong enough, active enough, high enough on the series to actually kick out H from a water. And I like it when I think of water as HOH. See the acid and the base? Equal part acid and base makes water neutral. If we have an active metal, such as sodium, or really any of the alkali metals from the first family, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, they are indeed strong enough to displace the hydrogen from a water molecule and form what's called an Arrhenius base, the NaOH. We've demonstrated this particular reaction several times in the lab. It's a single displacement reaction, and it really is uh, nothing more than sodium kicking out hydrogen, forming hydrogen gas in a single displacement. But now we're just reminding ourselves that this actually produces a base, something that would change indicators color. Pause the video 
and try number nine. You try writing a balanced equation for the reaction with calcium and water. I'm sorry, potassium and then calcium. They do occur, so no need to check the activity series. I'm letting you know that they are active metals. Try writing these out by pausing the video, and when ready to check, start it up again. Well, let's check your work. Did you write potassium metal as K? I like to write water as HOH. And I can see potassium kicking out the hydrogen, producing the Arrhenius base called potassium hydroxide. And based on charge, it's a one-to-one -one subscript ratio, KOH. You then balanced, knowing that there were two H's, so we doubled the water, two H's. That gave me two OH's, and then you balanced the potassium. Two to two to one to two, stoichiometric ratio. What about calcium metal reacting with water? Single displacement reaction. This time calcium kicks out the hydrogen, stealing the hydroxide. But did you remember to check your charges? Plus two on the calcium, minus one on the hydroxide. So simply balancing, you doubled the water. A one, two, one, one ratio. When an active metal is placed into water, it produces an Arrhenius base. Bases have high pHs and they turn litmus paper blue. Well, the Arrhenius definition, probably the most common definition that chemists use and from uh, physical science all the way back from elementary school when you first learned about properties of acids and bases, we talked about H being acids and OH being base. Problem is, is that there are substances that do everything an acid is supposed to do, but don't start with H. There's substances that do everything a base should do, but don't end with an OH. It's just not comprehensive enough to include all the compounds that behave as an acid and a base. We needed a better definition to include more substances that behave like acids and bases, yet don't start with H for acid or end with OH for base. We need a better definition to broaden it to include more compounds, and that's what the Bronsted-Lowry has done. Here's a prime example. We tested the other day a um, compound called ammonia. Ammonia turned blue litmus paper, or turned red to blue, or blue stayed blue. It had a pH above 7. It felt slippery. It did everything a base is supposed to do, and yet I don't see that it ends with an OH. Ammonia is a base through and through, does everything a base does, and doesn't end with an OH. This is not an Arrhenius base and yet it really is a base. We need a better definition. Here's a compound called sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate's a base, and yet nowhere in here do I see an OH. So obviously we need a better definition. If compounds do everything you're supposed to do but just don't contain the same uh, OH negative, we see we need a better definition. And that's what Bronsted and Lowry have done. This is a hyphenated name simply because two gentlemen, two chemists, were given the um, honor of naming this theory. Let's record and then see what we uh, mean by the following definitions. According to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, acids are hydrogen ion donors. Hydrogen ion donors. Another name for hydrogen, hydronium. Another name for hydrogen, protons. Acids are proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. Hydrogen ion acceptors or proton acceptors. Acids donate, bases accept. Record these definitions into your note pack. Let's show exactly how ammonia when placed in water behaves as a base. We start to call these conjugate pairs and conjugate pairs only differ by a hydrogen ion. There is just one single proton difference between a conjugate pair.
Here's ammonia. We just labeled that as a base. Now this will be weird, but in the Bromsted-Lowry theory, water, I'm writing water, water will act as an acid. See on the left side of our arrow, we will always have an acid reacting with a base. Remember how bases are proton acceptors? And water, therefore, must be a proton donor. Just reminding ourselves of our definitions we recorded just a moment ago. If water donates a hydrogen ion and ammonia accepts the hydrogen ion, we have a transfer of a hydrogen. Water donates, ammonia accepts. Now watch what happens. Ammonia had three hydrogens, now it has four carrying a positive one charge. We call that the polyatomic ion ammonium. Water with one less hydrogen forms its conjugate called hydroxide, OH negative. When the ammonia, and just think about what we've done, here's ammonia, NH3, lone pair of electrons. Here's a water molecule, HOH. We have a, tro a proton transfer. The hydrogen is attracted to that negative area, the electrons that are carrying a negative charge. A proton is transferred. We form NH4 plus, and what's left is OH minus. When water transfers a proton to ammonia, it forms a conjugate. The product that forms from a base is known as a conjugate acid. The product that forms from an acid is called its conjugate base. Conjugates only differ by a hydrogen ion. Examine what we've done. Ammonia and ammonium are conjugates. NH3, NH4+, only differ by a hydrogen ion. Water and hydroxide are conjugate pairs. They only differ by a hydrogen. Notice that when we when we transfer a proton, protons, same thing as hydrogen ions, they are plus one charge. So think about that in terms of the number line. If ammonia was neutral and you add a proton, go up one on the number line. It's now a plus one. Water was neutral. It lost a proton. Go, go back one on the number line and it formed a negative one charge. Every time you transfer a proton, think about it becoming more positive if you received the proton or more negative if you've lost the proton. We've identified conjugate pairs in our very first Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. The Bronsted-Lowry theory will have conjugate pairs, and notice there'll be a pattern. We'll always have one base and one acid on the left side of an arrow, producing a conjugate acid and a conjugate base on the right side of our arrow. We'll have one of each vocabulary words, a base making its conjugate acid, an acid making its conjugate base. Conjugate pairs in the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The term conjugates, formally defined. Conjugates are those two compounds that are related by the loss or gain of a hydrogen ion. Conjugates are those two compounds that are related by the loss or gain of a proton. And protons are positively charged. When I transfer a proton, when I transfer a hydrogen ion, think about moving on the number line. Receiving a proton, you become one more positive. Losing the proton, you become one more negative. We must consider charges with the Bronsted-Lowry theory. We defined a conjugate acid. We'll do so formally now in the notes. Write this down. The particle formed. So that means that conjugates are always on the product side. They're going to be to the right side of the arrow. Always, always. 
the particle formed when a base here, let me get the screen sorry the particle formed when a base gains the hydrogen ion the conjugate acid always has one more hydrogen than the left side of the equation you are gaining a proton The conjugate base is the particle that remains when an acid has donated the hydrogen ion. The conjugate base always has one less hydrogen than the left side of the equation. You've lost the proton. Conjugates form on the product side. Acids donate protons. They form a conjugate base. Bases accept protons, accepting creates a conjugate acid. Conjugates, those two substances that only differ by a proton. Acid plus base on the left and on the right, we have our conjugate pairs. We'll practice. Let's write HCl with water. HCl with water. And then it says, label the conjugate pairs. Well, HCl, even according to the Bronsted, or excuse me, the Arrhenius theory, we know clearly to be an acid. It starts with an H. Therefore, I automatically know, according to Bronsted-Lowry, that water must be behaving as a base. We will have a proton transfer. Acids are proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. We will transfer a proton from the acid to the base. And when we transfer that proton, we form conjugate pairs. Consider the number line when you do so. If HCl donates a proton, water will accept it. The particle that remains, if I just think about hooking together. If HCl is labeled an acid, it will form a conjugate base. I'm just going to write CB, but I will say conjugate base. The particle that remains after the acid has lost its H. So if HCl loses its proton, remember the charge. Loss of a proton becomes negative. You form chloride, the conjugate base. And water is acting as a base. It must form what's called a conjugate acid. I'm just going to write CA as a conjugate acid. Bases accept the proton. When HCl loses the proton, it transfers it to the water. Water now has H3O with a plus one charge. It has gained a proton. This is called hydronium, the acid ion. When HCl transfers a proton, what's left? Well, it's chloride, its conjugate base. When water accepts the proton, it becomes one more positively charged with an extra hydrogen in its formula. We recognize that to be the hydronium ion. Hydrochloric acid formed a conjugate base called chloride ion. Ions carry charges. Water acting as a base formed its conjugate acid called hydronium. You know, we just did something quite interesting. We talked about water in one scenario acting as an acid and in another scenario acted as a base. Let's make a definition, an example of a substance that's called amphoteric. It's a substance, such as water, that in some instances can act as an acid and donate a proton, or in some situations will act as a base and accept a proton, and water is a prime example. We just wrote HCl and water forming Cl negative and H3O plus. When we labeled those, we wrote down acid, base, 
conjugate base, conjugate acid. Water, very clearly in this first reaction here, acted as a base. But a moment ago, we also wrote ammonia with water. And here we wrote ammonia as a base and water acting as an acid. And when that happened, we formed ammonium and hydroxide. We wrote that a little bit ago. We formed the conjugate acid of ammonia and the conjugate base of water. Conjugates only differ by a hydrogen. But look what water's done. In one case, it acted as a base, and in the other case, it acted as an acid. Water is amphoteric. It can either donate a proton or accept a proton. And there's quite a few substances that can do that in the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Now I know that's weird, water is neutral, but remember it has equal part acid and base ion, so it can donate either the H or accept an additional H and form hydronium. Let's try an example with an ionization of nitric acid in water and label the conjugate pairs. Well, nitric acid should be a familiar formula from our polyatomic ion called nitrate, forming a monoprotic acid nitric acid, HNO3. And just as the name implies, it's an acid. Therefore, when we place it in water, water must behave as a base. We've got to have one of each, according to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid and a base react to form conjugate pairs. Now think about that. If the nitric acid is labeled an acid, it's going to form a conjugate base. If water is acting as a base, it's going to form a conjugate acid. Let that guide you in determining what happens from the left to the right. So hydrogen plus one, nitrate minus one, creates a neutral monoprotic nitric acid. Drop that into water and it ionizes. Acids are defined as proton donors. Don't like the word proton? Think of that as hydrogen ion donor. Bases are proton acceptors. Don't like the word proton? Think of it as a hydrogen ion. We are going to transfer the hydrogen ion to the water. A proton transfer occurs in acid-base Bronsted-Lowry chemistry. When nitric acid loses its proton, we form its conjugate base, the polyatomic ion called nitrate. Ions carry charges, NO3, negative 1. When water accepts the proton, it forms its conjugate acid called hydronium ion. Hydronium ion is charged. It's a plus 1 charge. Gaining a proton, plus 1. Losing the proton, minus 1. We have labeled the conjugate pairs. I even connected them with these little brackets. Conjugate pairs, those things that only differ by a hydrogen ion. So you can see that with Bronsted-Lowry theory, it's all about proton transfers. The acid will donate its hydrogen ion, and the base will accept it. We have proton transfers in the Bronsted-Lowry equation. Let's consider the self-ionization of sulfuric acid, removing just a single proton. Well, in this example, sulfuric is a diprotic, coming from that polyatomic ion sulfate. So when I crisscrossed, I made it a minus two. Sulfuric acid. Well, that's an acid, isn't it? It says so right in the name. So friends, remember, what if it starts with an H? It's always an acid. In this particular example, we're going to put it into water. Let's just transfer. And remember, Bronsted-Lowry says only a single proton difference. We can't take both off at the same time, but one step at a time. Here, water will behave as a base because we labeled sulfuric acid as an acid. Proton transfer removes just a single proton, giving me the conjugate base and this has a name it's called the hydrogen sulfate ion and that's on your polyatomic chart right in the first column water acting as a base then 
accepts the proton, forming its conjugate acid called hydronium. Ions carry charges. Be very careful. HSO4 negative 1, H3O plus 1. Hydrogen sulfate polyatomic ion. Here's hydronium polyatomic ion. Acid-base chemistry where we're labeling the conjugate pairs. Let's take a look at removing the second proton just from the equation I wrote. And I'm going to just put this back, even though you're moving down in your um, notepad page. If this very compound we formed, hydrogen sulfate polyatomic ion, goes on to lose its next proton, so we're just doing this in a step one, take one off, step two, take the next one off, step one, step two, two steps to remove both hydrogens forming a conjugate pair. Removing the second proton brings us down to the sulfate polyatomic ion and water again accepting that makes it hydronium. The conjugate pairs, hydrogen sulfite acting as an acid, water acting as a base. Hydrogen sulfate formed its conjugate base called sulfate polyatomic ion, now a minus two charge, and water accepting that formed hydronium, and hydronium is the conjugate acid of water, becoming a plus one charge. But notice what we've done. In one scenario, well, let's find a color. In one scenario here, hydrogen sulfate was a conjugate base. Here, hydrogen sulfate was an acid, acting as a base in one hand, and an acid. This was amphoteric a substance that in one condition was behaving as a base and yet in another situation acted as an acid. Water can be amphoteric, so can many other compounds. Amphoteric, a substance that can either accept or donate a proton. It can act as an acid or a base, depending upon the Bronsted-Lowry chemistry. If we have conjugate pairs, well, maybe I'll catch my note pack up, put where you are. Amphoteric, that was the last thing. I just wanted to be sure I was in the same spot as you are in the note pack. We labeled our conjugate pairs. We wrote amphoteric. It's probably the second time I've asked you to write that in the note pack. Can act as an acid or a base, either donating or accepting a proton. When that's completed, let's do some practices together. And I'll just use my um, note pack to put in my answers there and get that bigger. We're being asked to write conjugate acids for the following bases. So here's what I'm thinking. If these are bases and we want to write the conjugate acid, acids always have one more proton, add on a hydrogen ion, adding a hydrogen, add, add H plus. A base, when it forms its conjugate acid, accepts the proton. Cl negative, that's supposed to look like a superscript, chloride, forms HCl, hydrochloric acid. Adding an H plus to a Cl negative gives me a neutral compound. Hydrogen sulfate, polyatomic ion. Again, that's supposed to look like a superscript, minus one. Add on one more hydrogen. So if I think about adding H, HSO4, I'll combine those. And now I can see sulfuric acid. I combined H to HSO4, creating a neutral compound. Now look at here, ammonia, NH3, is neutral already. Add on a proton. And you'll recognize that it becomes our polyatomic ion, ammonium, NH4 plus 1. The conjugate acid in letter A, HCl. The conjugate acid for letter B, H2SO4. The conjugate acid for letter C, 
NH4 plus 1, a polyatomic ion called ammonium. Write the conjugate bases for the following acids. Well, if these are acids, we want to remove a proton, remove a hydrogen ion to form a conjugate base. Here's water, two H's and an O. It's a neutral molecule. Take off a proton, remove one of the H's, and it forms what we're used to seeing as OH negative one, called hydroxide, the polyatomic base ion. Here's carbonic acid, H2CO3. Remove a single proton, just one hydrogen. Conjugates only differ by one hydrogen. Taking off one hydrogen makes it become one more negative, and we get the hydrogen carbonate polyatomic ion. Ions are charged. Well, now letter C is the same thing we wrote as the answer. Let's take off that second proton, and we form the polyatomic ion carbonate. H2CO3, loss of one proton, became HCO3 negative. Removing the second proton, we get CO3 negative 2 carbonate. And letter D, this is hydronium, our acid ion, H3O plus. Take off an extra hydrogen ion, and we form a neutral water molecule. Conjugates only differ by one hydrogen ion. Some things that we've learned today. Competing definitions, the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. Very simply put, Arrhenius said acids start with an H, bases end with an OH. H-O-H, the foundation of Arrhenius acid-base chemistry. It wasn't broad enough. We broadened the definition according to Bronsted-Lowry and talked about proton transfers. Bronsted-Lowry is conjugate pairs. Acid plus base yielding conjugate acid plus conjugate base, where a proton is transferred from the acid to the base, making conjugate pairs. You're now ready to do your practice sheet, the Arrhenius Bronsted Lowry practice sheet. It is a, a separate homework assignment. So you're ready to stop the video and begin your assignment. Thank <laughs> you.